What's up, fellas? XRP Vault is back with another cryptocurrency update. Let's get started. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Okay, people, I hope everything is going well for you. I wanted to start by going over this thread because it contains a lot of crucial facts and information to keep the broader picture in mind. So, first and foremost, in terms of tokenization and various estimations, we have rapid projections that volumes of tokenized assets might reach $24 trillion by 2027, even this decade. According to BCG, the tokenization of global illiquid assets might reach $16 trillion to $68 trillion by 2030. A whole tokenized market is expected to account for 10% of global GDP by 2030. And if global GDP is at $107 trillion, or $100 trillion, plus 10% of that, the right there is roughly $10 trillion. Cross-border money flows were roughly $156 trillion in 2022. And according to BCG, this figure is expected to rise, reaching $250 trillion by 2027. When we think of tokenization, we usually think of the world's largest asset classes. However, when it comes to BCG's predictions of $16 trillion to $68 trillion in global illiquid assets becoming tokenized, this could be a variety of things, including entirely new sorts of assets and even industries being monetized and assigned value, as well as liquidity within those markets. That is why I am optimistic about the future of tokenization of internationally illiquid assets in new marketplaces because they have never been able to assign value to these assets and exchange them with liquidity amongst diverse players. So, for example, intellectual property, IP, copyright, and trademarks are big industries, even just in the S and P500. So the S and P500 is worth more than $30 trillion, with intellectual property accounting for 30% of that value, or around $10 trillion. As a result, several Fortune 500 businesses, like as Porsche, have sizable IP portfolios. In odd circumstances, such as Porsche, the intellectual property portfolio exceeds the company's current market valuation, and it extends far beyond intellectual property. We may discuss tokenization of real estate and overall value represented on chain, as well as various forms of financing products, DFIs, and so on. We may also view some of the world's most important asset classifications. The equity market is worth more than $100 trillion, while the global bond market is worth more than $100 trillion, $300 trillion in commercial and residential real estate worldwide. The global derivatives market, which is extremely intangible, encompasses futures, swaps, options, and other forms of goods, and it is worth 1.2 quad trillion. Then there's the global commodities market, which is worth $23 trillion. Metals, oil, animals, grains, rice, fertilizer, and so on. And as of today, the whole crypto market cap is a minuscule fraction of that value of about $1 trillion. So, from 2013 to the present, this is the overall crypto market cap on a weekly basis. We jumped from 800 million to 16 billion while sitting in this increasing channel. As that peak in 2013, another multi-year bear market followed until the next bull run in 2018, hitting a high of around 845 or 850 billion. Another multi-year bear market and then heading to $3 trillion for a new all-time high market cap in 2021. Since then, we've been in a severe bear market, particularly for altcoins. I also drew the Bitcoin dates with vertical lines down below for reference, whether or if you believe the Bitcoin having dates are real after three consecutive occurrences, many individuals believe this time could be quite different. At the end of the day, we're all guessing whether Bitcoin will skyrocket before collapsing for the first time in history. Others, on the other hand, may feel that Bitcoin will be in a bear market until well after the halving. I believe it is critical to plan for all possible eventualities, but always plan for the worst-case scenario. If Bitcoin truly takes off, I will be well-positioned. Looking at the big picture, 
I believe the total market valuation for the crypto asset class will expand over time. And here's a quick rundown of the various industries that will profit from distributed ledger technology. Also, keep in mind that not every DLT is the same. Some are permissioned, some are permission lists, and some are hybrid, and each has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. What makes the acquisition so significant is that it has the potential to affect every industry sector imaginable. Supply chain, logistics, provenance, Internet of Things, healthcare, retail, e-commerce, traditional finance improvements, lending, real estate, media, NFTs, or just any type of certificate of ownership, IP manufacturing, music payments, gaming, identity, security, energy, any type of storage or rendering, and dozens more with new use cases on the way. As previously said, there are three sorts of networks, public, private, and hybrid each with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. According to the blockchain trilemma, there is usually a trade-off between security, decentralization, and scalability. And as we all know, the enterprise market is the world's largest, and it is also the market with the least penetration in the crypto asset class. So the point is that we have yet to witness actual utility at scale. We can't even get rules in place. However, I believe that many businesses and governments prioritize privacy for AIPAA compliance and other reasons, so they'll be using private networks, hybrid chains, and some may still connect to a public DLT network, and with future tokenization projections, it's not a question of if, but of when. So what are the advantages of connecting to a public network, or even a project ranked in the top 100 by CoinMarketCap? To begin with, in today's ecosystem, when there is virtually no trust in banks, governments, and other institutions, openness, trust, and decentralization are critical. The benefit of these organizations wanting to connect to a public network is improved security. If you have a private network and are linked to the public network, it's immutable and tamper-resistant. If you're running on both, this is actually very useful because you can have a second audit trail that can be cross-referenced with your private instance. Another advantage of connecting to a public network is that it usually has better liquidity and is open to a wider range of participants. Moreover, the world's top banks, custodians, and exchanges, such as NASDAQ, are claiming to build crypto trading desks. As you can see, BNY Fidelity, Charles Schwab State Street, Goldman BlackRock, and NASDAQ are among the AUM. CyBO is visible in crypto leverage trading. Singapore's largest bank is also a member of the Hadara Governing Council. Bank of America, Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, UBS, and even JP Morgan are developing their own proprietary solutions while criticizing Bitcoin. We have HSBC and Spur Bank, which is Russia's largest bank. Some of these organizations made announcements in 21, some in 22, and some were much more recent in terms of crypto trading desks like Asia's BC and Spur Bank, as well as JP Morgan earlier this year announcing the opening of a crypto fund for their clients. And of course, there are a slew of new institutional players interested in Bitcoin ETFs or exchange-traded funds. So there are two kinds physically backed ETFs and futures-based ETFs, and I'm excited to see when Bitcoin spot ETFs will be allowed. I believe they've been approved, but I'm not sure when. I simply believe that these leveraged future ETFs will be approved first, which could lead to more price manipulation. But this isn't necessarily something new for us. Price manipulation occurs in all markets to some extent, especially as they mature. And I believe we will continue to see choppy trendless months or never-ending down markets, followed by extreme volatility and tremendous bull runs, as usual, and finally a massive crash. So I simply wanted to express my admiration for everyone who is going to be here for the long haul. We must withstand this storm in order to reap the benefits, and I do not believe in financial advice. This is one of the most significant opportunities of our lives. And without sounding overly optimistic, recall what's possible, especially during a bull run.
Bear markets last only long enough for us to almost forget about the potential. It, it just takes a few great triumphs to ECLIP some of your biggest losses. If you can get 2-5x back-to-back during a bull run, that's a 25x return. You could play it extremely successfully if you're on the appropriate assets, timing it correctly, and simply wait. And there's nothing wrong with taking a break from cryptocurrency, Twitter, YouTube, or anything else during a bear market. Even if I take a break from Twitter or YouTube or anything else, I'm still paying attention for my own mental health. I'm still keeping track of when and if any alts hit new lows or trigger alarms. At the same time, if you do want to quit, I don't blame you one bit. But I'm not leaving because that's usually the most essential moment to accumulate in research when the majority of people want to give up. And, as we demonstrated in earlier films, the most critical move to catch is the first couple waves of a bull run or even a large pullback from the lows. In all seriousness, I hope you guys completely destroy it when the time comes. And now for a few more details. We'll try to make this video short and sweet, and please stay tuned for more videos in the future. So Ripple just put it out there. There are five crypto fallacies that no company executive should believe. Myth 1. Crypto is a passing craze. False. It is not going away. Yes, there are con artists. There will be many alts that fail, but there will also be true winners who rise from the ashes. I recommend that you read this article. We'll just fly through it, but don't forget to look at some of these stats. Myth number two is that cryptocurrency is hazardous and volatile. Although cryptocurrency is volatile, what is more dangerous? Dealing with the United States, transferring a liquid digital asset in three to five seconds, or holding a dollar for two to five days, and the volatility between different FX rates. Myth 3. Crypto is unsustainable. False. Some of the most efficient networks in this sector include the XRP ledger, Hadara's hashgraph, and even algorithms blockchain. Myth number 4. Crypto solutions are tough to install and complex. We now have a Web 2 stack and are working on a Web 3 stack, but we're attempting to establish interoperability so that the Web 3 stack can fit neatly into the Web 2. We can't just build incredible technologies without a bridge. There was a recent interview with Casper CTO on the DFI YouTube channel, and it was simply great. I really advise you to go check it out. After you see it, I think you'll be very impressed with Casper Network's actual tech stack, with its modular design and ease of integration with the Web 2 stack. There are many wonderful initiatives out there, but they are not building the necessary bridges or development kits to connect them. And businesses do not want to undertake additional work. The greatest and most widely adopted corporate initiatives are those that collaborate with the enterprise to make it as frictionless as feasible. In Myth 5, crypto lacks regulatory clarity globally. Thus, there are a range of countries that currently have some level of clarity. The United States is without a doubt one of the industry's biggest laggards. We have some exciting news for Casper Network members. The Casper Payments Gateway is now available, making it easier to accept Casper Payments for your business. As a result, compatibility is critical. Also, Mitch and Adrian mentioned that another 440 retailers are now accepting 8-bar in parabolic 8-bar right here. Over 3 million bar were transferred to Medico. Remember that Ripple owns 100% of this custodian. So far, so intriguing. I'm curious whether this has anything to do with Archax and the tokenization of Aberdeen's fund sitting on Hadera's governing council. We know Medico is a major company with a lot of partners, and they're actually connecting with a lot of banks for crypto services. The top crypto development activity was also shared by Santama. So we notice Kusama Polkadot in the overall GitHub code commits. I'm looking forward to seeing that environment restore. We obtained Cardano. S and T Hedera link are available. Atom is an ICP for Decentraland and Ethereum. Remember that Casper Labs is a member of the Linux Foundation, together with some of the world's largest corporations, including Meta, Microsoft, and Oracle. We have Cisco, Citrix, Google, 
Panasonic Toshiba, which is intriguing, and we'll go over that in a future video with their connection with IPWE, a Casper partner, Sony, Dell, Uber, Toyota, Alibaba, Accenture, Capgemini, Capital One, and Casper Labs are among the companies represented. Moving forward, CZ will also share Hong Kong. So, Wu Blockchain Hong Kong Rating Agency, the Kvac released its virtual asset index. They offer Bitcoin ETH stablecoins, RAF tokens, and Bitcoin Cash. Litecoin BNB Madoc Ada Adam Filecoin in the vicinity of Algorand ICP XRP Doge Polkadot. So I'm pleased to see XRP, HBAR, Algo Key and T, as well as a few more on this list. Remember that Algor recently received a 10,000 transaction per second upgrade, which included a 3.3 block time with finality. Matt, the COO of Casper Network, has arrived to inform us that they are attending the Actus Conference in Washington, D.C. This is something Casper has shared with us. Anyone who has worked in finance knows that financial contracts are the molecular building blocks of the financial system. As an example, Casper employs the Actus standard as the computational engine for their tokens or smart financial contracts. That's significant given that Actus is one of the world's three largest data standards, alongside FIX and ISO. Last but not least is eTrust Capital Sharing. As of 2023, there are around 45 million American crypto users and 420 million global crypto users, both of which are still less than 1 billion. And while it's entertaining to compare the number of crypto users to the number of internet users, we must remember that even this large number of crypto users are not using it at scale with utility. The majority of individuals are basically mum and dad buying Dogecoin and holding a small amount on Coinbase. So the point I'd like to underline is that we haven't seen usefulness or even these dApps or applications working at scale. So with 400 million users, I'd like to see 400 million users actively participating in crypto rather than simply purchasing $30 of Doge on Coinbase and hoarding it for a few years. So be sure to look at eTrust Capital. This is linked in the topmost pinned remark on the YouTube video description. If you utilize that link to sign up for a free account, you'll also receive a $100 financing bonus. So I've been using this platform for more than three years now. Personally, I have a Roth IRA, which means I pay no taxes on capital gains. So I hope you liked today's video. Much love, and I'll see you in the next. I'd love it if you could hit the like button if you appreciated this video. Please share your ideas in the comments section. And my link tree, which has all links, crypto resources, and discounts, is linked at the top of this YouTube video description. I'll see you at the next one.